Oh, I thought it wasn't plugged in for a second because I saw those. Anyway, sorry. Um, <clears throat> okay, video time. What's up, guys? Jace Two Cents here, and on Twitter, I asked, "What are you laughing at? That reset? That <laughs> Let me find my chi. Okay. cheese. Cheese. Ooh, cheese. lunchtime. Is it lunchtime? Almost. <laughs> I want pizza too. Hey, shut up. Go. Okay. <laughs> What's up, guys? JS2 Cents here, and on Twitter the other day, Twitter, Twitter, the other day I asked you what kind of videos you guys liked most. And, and with no surprise, most of you guys were like, I like the stupid experiments. So I thought now that the 10900K is out, we would go full circle and bring it back to where a lot of the stupid experiments started. <laughs> Let's see how cold we can get it. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by the Corsair One Pro i200 Compact Workstation PC. Powered by the Intel Core i9-10940X 14-core CPU and NVIDIA 2080 Ti video card, the i200 is the best of both worlds when it comes to water-cooled, small form factor PCs for both work and play. To learn more about this tiny but powerful professional-grade PC, follow the link in the description below. What if I do that? You guys are always wanting to hear Phil. <laughs> Hey, can you hear me now? Oh, that's weird. Oh, hey. Ah! <laughs> 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 All right, so no, we're not kicking off the Rip GN thing again. This, the Rip GN thing was fun because we were going after like the top scores and you're not gonna get a top score with a 10900K. Um, but in our last video about this, I talked about the fact that it runs a lot cooler than we expected. No, it's something in the oh. AC. Anyway, I talked about how cool the 10900K actually runs with its new IHS design. So I figured right now, I'm gonna start all over again with the AC and then maybe we'll move on to ice bucket and then maybe we'll move on to dry ice and then we'll move on to LN2 like we tend to do. But, hey, that rhymed. Maybe I am Jay-Z after all. So what I need to do, obviously. <laughs> so what we need to do, obviously, is we need to build a chamber because we've got to get from here to here. <laughs> Might as well just use this side, which still has the thing in it. There. Ah! Oh, damn! <laughs> no! So what I need to do is chamber this, obviously. I'm gonna have to flip the fans around so they're pulling the air. I think I'm just gonna have it go like that. That's probably the most common comment I get when I do these air conditioning videos, is, Jay, what are you gonna do about condensation? The, the temperature delta between the part we're cooling and the ambient temperature is not enough to create a lot of condensation. There's some, a tiny bit, but I don't need to insulate the motherboard or anything like we do when we do dry ice and um, LN2 and all that stuff. I'm like the king of cardboard, aren't I? All I do is cardboard shit. I'm a modder. <laughs> I, I want this to be a little bit more thought of or thought out than just putting a cardboard box over the whole thing with a hole in it. We've done that before, actually. I like how this Asus box is like the perfect size to start with. It's like they went, you know, someday, Jay will probably use this box for a stupid experiment. And they'll be like, that's our time to shine. So we need to build our bottom structure here. <laughs> Shut up. You're not helping. No, 39. Shut up. <laughs> 39. I'm a better physical specimen than I was at 19. Yeah, let that mental image stir in your brain a little bit. Bond. James Bond. <laughs> I know, I know at this point some people were just like, really, Jay? I have to assume those might be the people that are newer around here. <laughs> 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 I have to double layer it or it's too thin. I have to crisscross it. Crisscross and make you jump, jump. <laughs> Mac Daddy make you jump, jump. Gia just dated myself. How, how strong is it? Hey! <laughs> Ugh. I'm kind of wondering right now though, if these fans won't maybe reduce the airflow. Cause that's probably gonna push more CFM than these fans can move. Oh. I made a drum. Terminator 2. Yeah, I'm done. Well, I've got to go from a square hole to a rectangle hole, right? 
Does this make me a cardboard smith? <laughs> I'm, not even gonna, I'm not even gonna pretend like, my model building prepared me for this. <laughs> I don't build models like this. I know how to build things. All right. My contraption Maton 5000 is together. I need to check for air leaks. I took the fans off of here because I'm pretty sure that, like I said, the fans were gonna slow it down. So I'm just putting this paper, this paper, paper towel on there. Paper, paper, <laughs> I would just say piece of paper towel, like a paper towel. Cause I want to see. Paper, 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 piece of paper towel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe he was bored. All right, I want to see how much airflow is coming through here. So let me turn this on. Dude, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's, Whee! that's definitely more than I think Woo! fans could All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna put those fans on because I really don't think they're gonna help. Although at full speed, they might. I mean, there's a lot of air coming through here. So what we're gonna do first is we'll see what the temperatures are, like I said. Um, just by blowing that air through their ambient, it's not gonna cause it to go colder at all. So we can click it on then while our Cinebench test is like running and then see how far down the temps come. And then we'll see if we can gain any sort of overclocks out of it. I want to see how far down the temperatures come while it's mid test and we turn it on. Yeah, this is just going to be like having fans on it. So it should be the same as just regular AIO. It might cool a little better though, because it doesn't have the fans like, you know, the hub blocks some of the airflow and the fans only kind of get grab air from the side, but this is clearly all being diffused through there perfectly. Didn't realize it was on low fans. So now look, here's our, <laughs> our little flow indicator there. Uh, what the hell? It's not even overclocked. Uh, <laughs> we, I removed the def like the limits, but I didn't do any overclocks. No, I removed all the, the CPU like thermal limits and, okay. and the timer and all that stuff, but I left it at the factory overclock. So it should go to like 4.9 gigahertz or 4.8 gigahertz and stay there. So because we can see our liquid temp using cam, because this is a NZXT cooler, I want to wait for equil equilibrium. And like I said, we're doing this with just the airflow from the fan, just the fan on from the AC. Then we'll click the AC on and see how far down it comes before we even try doing any overclocking. All right, so our liquid temp is equalized at 26C. This is exactly where our baseline was. CPU is at 58, 59, and our cores over here, if you look, our hottest core is 62C, with our coolest core being 58C. I love that spread. Think back to Haswell, like 4770, you'd see like 14C was the average difference or delta between hottest and coldest. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna click the AC on high and we are gonna see just how far down these temperatures will go. So after only a couple of minutes, our liquid temperature went from 26 down to 14C and our CPU came down like 15C to about 45. It was at 60C when we started it. Our temperatures now, geez, between the, when the test like goes in between, it drops down to like 20. So it's in the 40s, the mid to upper 40s, 43C, hottest core is 48C. I ignore these min maxes. That was from like, it hadn't dropped yet completely when I did the reset. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna stop the test and I'm gonna let the liquid temp go as cold as it's gonna go, not under load. That way we can then overclock this now and see how far we'll actually get on this. Actually, you know, I'm gonna go right to 5.3. I'm curious if I can get 5.3 to go. It's predicting 1.55 volts for that. I don't think that's right. Fine, I'll go 5.2 because we know it can do it. All right, so we're at 5.2 gigahertz, running at uh, 1.4 or 1.38 volts. CPU's at like 15C at the idle and the liquid is still 11. So let's just see. Now, before I start this, these are the same settings where when we did our temperature testing before with just a regular AIO, that it shot up to like the upper 80s and I think a couple cores might have hit like 89 or 90. So this will tell us already how much more efficient this, this uh, IHS is. At 51. <laughs> 50. So you're getting colder than stock temperatures. 50s. Look at, the, look at the cores, 50s. Now the question is gonna be how, how wow. Jeez. <laughs> Loud truck much? Shut up! <laughs> so the question is going to be how long can the cooler hold off the heat soak? So obviously the temperature has got to equalize somewhere. It's at 12 C right now. This is already way better than I expected. We're talking over 30 C drop. And all it even took was a, an air conditioner and an entire table, a bunch of cardboard and a half a roll of duct tape. The crazy thing here is that it's not even taking uh, 10 minutes to reach equilibrium. It came up 2 C, well 3 C technically from 11 to 14. 
So we're sitting here overclocked to 5.2, all core, 1.4 volts, and we're sitting here in the mid 50s on our test. That gives you some hope to be able to go farther because here's the thing, as we try and push this farther now, it's gonna take exponentially more voltage just to get an extra 100 megahertz out of it. So the liquid temp was at 10 C, it actually came down slightly, but check this out, we're at 5.3 now, also sitting in the mid 50s now. So once that comes up to about the 14 or 15 C that I'm expecting, that'll probably come up to about 60 C. Well, it soft crashed, which is a good sign. I'm, and based on the temperatures, that means I can give it a little more voltage right now without feeling concerned about the temperatures. If we were just on the AIO right now without the AC, and the, which is essentially now we just made a little chiller, right? It's not as good as like a Peltier or anything like that, but it's a chiller. Bringing the water down below ambient, I think we can push this to like 1.4 volts. It's at 1.38 right now. So I think 1.4 might get us the 5.3 that I want. We're in the yellow now, guys. All right, so we equalized once again at 14C. It's not going any higher. Our temps, as you can see, our hottest core hit 60, which I think I predicted would happen. So coolest core is at 55, hottest core is at 60, and as you can see, most of them are obviously sitting in between there, like right in the middle. And then the test has been looping, 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 looping. I don't know what our score is. 66, 61, it's so consistent. So we've gained almost 400 points over our our factory overclock 5.2 score. So, all right, let's see how far this will go. All right, so I bumped the voltage to 1.41, just for good measure, and we're at 5.4 gigahertz now. All right, let's see if it will actually run or just immediately crash. Yeah, immediate crash. Now is where, now, yes, and that's, that's where things start to become sketchy. <laughs> all right, here we go. Come on, baby, come on, baby. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy, stop. We made it two, Aww, we made it, we made it two dick dicks. Yes, <laughs> Do you dude. see how like 5.3 was easy? 100 megahertz now, one extra multiplier is giving us this much of a problem. This is, this is overclocking 101 and this is when things start to become fun for me. 1.45, let's just go for it. Oh snap, look at the temps, 50s. Oh, but it crashed. It's, you still give it more voltage. Yeah, but. Oh, there it is, there's the full lockup. So you see how I'm gaining stability a little bit as I pump in the voltage slowly? Um, now, to be fair, I am doing it sort of crudely by just doing V-Core. I'm not adjusting things like VID or VIN, which is the voltage in and all that sort of stuff. It might need a little more tweaking to get this where I want it. But I think I might be able to just sort of brute force it there actually, see if that'll get us there. I don't know how long-term stable this would be. Like, I'm not sure we could sit here and just run it until we re reach equilibrium, but <laughs> equilibrium, <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but let's see what the score is though when it completes. I need to do one clean run though, so at least I'll save it on here. Aww. Oh, come on. <laughs> it hurt. We're eating lunch and then we'll come back. We'll let, we'll let it cool off. So I've been trying for a little bit right now to get 5.5 to boot. I've got as high as 1.6 volts on the CPU. Can't get it to boot. 5.4 I can get to work though. We just have a feeling that in order to get 5.5 to boot, it's gonna need to be way colder than we can get it here. I mean, it's sitting at 19 C as you can see right now. Look at the current voltage, 1.581. Because it was set to 1.6. But what I will show you right now is how the temps are at 1.5 volts. Actually it was 1.51 I think show you how well it's actually gonna do temperature wise at that kind of voltage, which is insane. That's a lot of voltage. You should never run that kind of voltage daily. But I wanna show you how easily by reducing it from 5.5 volts, or jeez, oh, 5.5 5 gigahertz to 5.4 gigahertz, how much like the this, this system came back. So just how much of a difference one multiplier makes to stability. Let's see what we got here score wise. So I'm just going to run one test to get a score. And then we'll let it loop to see what max temperatures are. But let's see what the temps are right now during the run. 60s. Hottest core is 65. 66. At 1.51 1. 1. 1. volts. <laughs> the power of, you know what? Thank you, Mr. Carrier. Thank you. You are one of the best people that has ever lived. Mr. Carrier? He's the one that invented the, the condenser here and the air conditioner. Oh, is that why Carrier Air Conditioner? Yeah, just like Edison is the electric company. Oh! 6720. 
Hey, we barely edged out the first gen Threadripper 16 core processor. Well, we did it with 10 cores. It's actually kind of kind of cool, I guess. But but again, core clock, right? Yeah. 5.4 gigahertz versus 3.9 all core. Well, and also that 3950X doesn't need this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, what if we give it that, right? All right, we're gonna let this loop, see where the final temperatures are, and then you guys yourself can see. Or do. Go buy a 12,000 BTU AC, which is actually not a very big one and uh, hook it up to your computer. I know some of you guys are probably like, he's just stole that idea from that Twitter photo that went around of that kid that taped his AIO to the split, mini split uh, unit up in, in his roof. Hey, we've been air conditioning our CPUs for like three years now, and I've got an idea. And it's gonna involve this stuff. Okay, so we're running into some pretty sporadic stability problems. Um, so I'll show you a run right now. We just, it just crashed and we're restarting. We ran the test maybe, it went through like maybe eight. Four or five minutes. Yeah, maybe eight times or so. And I have, a, I have a theory right now. So if we look at temperatures here, it's at 5.4 volts, or four, I keep saying that, 5.4 gigahertz. And if we take a look at temperatures on core temp, cores are sitting in the teens. Voltage is at 1.55 right now. No, 1.52, I think. Shit, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, it's 1.52. And during the temps, during the test, the temps, they sit in the, in the 60s. That's just where they go, mid 60s, and they don't go any higher. 67's our hottest core, right? And they're sitting in the 60s. That gives us 50 Celsius headroom, 50. But the random stability issues that we're dealing with right now are typically what we experience when we start having a wet socket. <clears throat> so I think the way we're going to end this video by, although obviously the air conditioner chiller works as expected, I feel like we need to, before we end this video, pop the cooler off and take a look inside because the amount of water that is starting to formulate on the radiator, formulate, <laughs> starting to form on the radiator, is a score of 6794. It's going up. 6794 <laughs> so, for 5.4? For 5.4, yeah. So that's our official score. Temperatures in the, in the upper 60s. So when we went to lunch, I just left it because I was like, no, nah, just let it go. It'll, it'll get it nice and cold. And uh, the amount of condensation on the radiator, because that's the part exposed to the air, is, is a lot. So allow me now to take this off to see what this looks like. That's perfectly dry. I just suck it overclocking. <laughs> see, perfectly dry. <laughs> All right, I'll put new thermal paste and all that stuff on there. But guys, you guys said you wanted to see some more crazy experiments. This is where we started last time and we're gonna obviously scale up from here. I think I'm gonna go right to dry ice next instead of ice water. Should we tell them our stupid dry ice idea? No, no that'll be. Nope, my stupid dry ice idea will be tried next time we do a stupid experiment. It's dumb because I already know the science behind it and I don't think it's gonna work, but I wanna see how bad, I'm, how, how far off it'll be. Yeah. All right guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. See, yeah. PC gaming is easy and cheap. Yeah, who needs an Xbox Series X?